Recently I did a couple of videos about post-truth society and what is going on at the present in politics. And in the discussion it became clear that uh, there's a lot that is happening that people are very unhappy with. Now, democracy, the idea that everyone has a right to vote, is something that was fought for through the last century and many it's established in many countries. And yet, recently in particular, I get the impression that it's producing results that people don't like. Something which they all wanted, all thought was good, it doesn't seem to be working the way people hoped. Now, I'm surprised I haven't heard people talking about panicky which was a suggestion for universal government, which I think it was a Victor in Victorian times, in the middle of the 19th century, um, a Belgian person suggested it. It's a bit of a misnomer because panicky ought to be the opposite of anarchy. Anarchy means no one is ruling. Panarchy should mean everyone is ruling. Now, when I describe the system, you see it isn't really everyone ruling. It's more that everyone is empowered to a certain extent. So perhaps that justifies the name. But first, I'd like to say there's two things about democracy which are causing a problem, and I think are partly addressed by the idea of panicky, and I'm rather surprised I haven't heard people talking about it. And really what I'm saying in this video is, have you heard of it, and you know, do you think there's anything in it? The first problem, is the unfairness of uh, the voting system. I think it's well illustrated if you take America where basically there's two parties, um, Democrats and Republicans. It was really hard on the Republicans when Obama and the Democrats came into power because here was a government that they hadn't voted for and as soon as the Democrats won, then America becomes a Democrat nation and all their taxes go towards supporting a government that they hadn't voted for. And it was even harder when, for the Democrats when Trump brought the Republicans into power because, again, they, were vote, um, they now had a government that they hadn't voted for and their taxes were going to support that government, not only on policies they didn't agree with, but some of those policies were actively dismantling. They were paying to have dismantled policies that they were happily paid to be put into place, like Obamacare. So there's a sense of unfairness for the losers in an election like that. And to make it worse, it's not as though there was a huge swing, you know, that 90% of the people wanted this change in government. What happens is it's just really a very small percentage shift around the centre. Um, you know, it goes, I don't know, from sort of 48% to 54%. And, um, and then the whole government, the whole country changes to a, uh, a different political party. And that is unfair. Now the second problem is really as a result of that small shift because so much depends on winning the people in the middle, just getting them tipping onto your side, it means that there's a tendency for all the parties to slide towards the centre and desperately try to appeal to as many people as possible rather than having clear philosophies, clear strategies which um, people can identify with. So, for instance, in, in England, um, the Labour Party, which should in theory be, represent the socialist government, under Blair it became really no different from the Thatcher Party principles, and so on. There's this desire to catch people in the middle means that really all the parties tend to slide into being very similar. They may make a few promises which differentiate them, but you know that when they come into power, really nothing much is going to change. Now, panicky, as I understand it, addresses those two problems. 
Because what it does is it gets rid of the vote. Under panicky, there is no vote. You don't vote for a party, you join it. And having joined it, the tax you pay goes to that party. Now for a start, joining a party and paying your tax to that party is a serious commitment. So whereas ticking a box and saying, well, let's try these people is really a thing one might decide on the spur of the moment or with very little thought. If you're going to be joining a party and paying considerable tax towards it, it had better be something that you believe in and you can put your faith in. So for instance, um, uh, going back to the British parties, there should be a Conservative Party, which really is Conservative in the sense that it says we want to more or less maintain the status quo and move with the times, yes, but in terms of what has been shown to work. And you should have a Socialist Party, which um, genuinely um, tries to give everyone equal opportunities. And I think a Liberal Party where um, uh, the emphasis is on education, providing a good education and good health for everyone. And with the idea that then less money would have to be spent on patching up the problems that arise from um, uh, you know, differences in ability and differences in, in um, entitlement. Something like that. You could have a communist party where you have people who really believe one should not own property and things and so on. So a few but clearly differentiated parties that one can say, I really believe in that. Um, I'm going to give my money to that. Now, what that does is it takes the emphasis away from the nation to the party you have chosen. You wouldn't say now that um, uh, America's a Republican country now. You would say, I don't know, there are 48% of people have joined the Republican Party, whereas only 40% joined the Democratic Party, or something like that. You know, it wouldn't be one or the other. It's a question of what relationship is between the two. Now, the question is, would that be possible? Could, you, could it work like that? You see, it has already been done, because that's the way religions work. If I um, converted to Catholicism, I would um, perhaps pay a stipend towards the Catholic community and uh, I would have Catholic schools, maybe Catholic hospitals, certainly Catholic churches. Um, and if I went to another country, I would still be a part of the Catholic community and I could use those facilities. If I became a Quaker, I could go to um, Quaker send my children to Quaker school, I could um, go to Quaker meeting houses um, and there are certain businesses run by Quakers where I might um, have a better chance of getting a job and so on. If I become a Muslim, become part of the very supportive Muslim community and if I go to a different country I could step into that wherever I went. So if you had parties like that um, then whatever country you went to you would not be paying tax to that country, you'd be paying tax to that party and you would have all the facilities that that party offered. So for example, um, someone who had joined the Liberal Party, he'd be paying much more tax than his neighbour who has joined a Conservative or a Republican Party. But when it came to having children wanting to send them to school, he would have free education or very subsidised education of a very high quality, whereas the Republican or Conservative would have to pay the full whack if he wanted a good education. And same with hospitals and that. So um, there's a germ of an interesting idea here, I think. And so because it means that you, the parties would be much more clearly differentiated 
no one's going to join a party which is wishy-washy. They're going to join a party where they really think its principles are what they believe in and the way they want to live. And so you would get dedicated support for those parties. Now the problem, and it's a very big problem, is it's all very well sending your children to um, a liberal school, um, take advantage of a good liberal hospital, um, and uh, maybe living in a liberal housing estate or whatever is provided by the party. But who does the roads? Who does the police? And who does justice? Because, for instance, um, for a member of the fascist party, uh, vandalising a Jewish shopkeeper's premises might be considered a very minor crime. But if the Jewish shopkeeper was a member of the Liberal Party, that would be considered a very serious hate crime. So, who decides what the punishment would be? Um, so, something else is needed, uh, and it might be equivalent of the sort of World Council of Churches or something, or that a certain proportion of your tax um, goes to the party and the majority goes to the party and the rest goes to a sort of um, a national infrastructure um, organisation. Or it might be something like, it might make sense if the income tax goes to the party you're a member of, because then it's in the interest of the party to provide the conditions, the economic conditions, where you can prosper and become wealthy and be able to pay that income tax. Whereas something like value-added tax might be what the national organisation does in order to look after the roads, um, provide a police force and all those sort of um, other uh, what might call secular activities. One other thing about panicky is, of course, you don't have to join any party. If you decide that none of them suit you, you become an outlaw, if you like. You, um, you uh, don't join any party. Then you completely have to, you know, you have to homeschool or whatever. You um, have to do everything your own way. Or you might form some little local community. Um, but you're free to do that. So I think it's an interesting idea because I can see that it's certainly isn't ruled by everybody, but it does sort of empower people. And it seems to address the two problems which are now vexing um, the democratic process. So I don't know, are people considering panicky? Are they looking at it again? Um, and, uh, you know, is the thought going into whether this might be a way of um, a new way of presenting democracy and what can one do about the problem of you know the overlap between these cultures for example um uh, i don't see why a liberal school as long as it's provided places for all the liberal party members um uh if there's some places left over they might sell those places at a high play at a high price to people who are not Liberal Party. So, you know, there could be some trade between these these things. Um, but just basically, uh, the first thing is to support the members of that party, um, their priority. And so it's rather like um, a religious culture where you join a church and you get the benefits of that church and you pay your, your um, stipend, your What's the word? Yeah, you know, pay something towards that church. So that's it, my question. Anyone heard of panicky? Anyone heard of anyone working on it as an idea? And might there be something in it?